First of all, God was the creator of the first family. We know that, right? Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Therefore, because he created the families, the first institution he ever made, God wants for you to feel and to know the love of family. Of course, we know that the first family, as I said, was Adam and Eve. And God had placed them in the perfect environment, in a garden with animals and birds and trees all around. They had no worries. They had no car payments, no mortgage. They had no food. Didn't even have to go to the mall to get clothes. Hello. And so God created the first family. And the beautiful thing about that first family was that God was right there in the midst of it. Every day in the cool of the evening, the scripture tells us that God would come down and he would walk with them in the garden. And so we know that this first family had God right in the middle of it. And so God created the first family. But it's interesting to note that even before the fall, even before sin entered into the human race, God recognized a human need that's inside of every single person. And that need is for companionship. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18 says this. It says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper comparable to him. How do you realize that God wants for us to live in community? God wants for there to be family. Even, I notice, even in, in movies, you know, about superheroes or, or cars, you know, you, you know, the, the, the people, they, even if they're not related to each other, they refer to each other as Familia, right? You've heard that. Sure, right? They may be a group of criminals. They don't mind driving around, driving fast and furious and driving cars and, and killing others, but man, they've got this family value called familia, right? And I mean, you know, and it's, a, it's a good thing because family is important, right? And even that we've discovered that men, especially if they're estranged from family, that they, they don't even live as long. It's even been statistically proved that. Uh, but I don't know who you are, but everybody needs friendship. Am I right? Everybody needs companionship. Everybody needs the joy that comes from positive, solid relationships in your life. And it is absolutely amazing what some individuals will sacrifice in order to have someone there to be beside with them during the year. Some people take abuse for many, many, many years and they don't leave. What you say, well, you people say, well, why is that is because they simply don't want to be alone. Yeah. Yeah. Others get married or get involved in relationships with people that really down in their, in their heart, they know that this is not the person that God intends for them. Uh, they may not be Christians. How many of you know the Bible says we're only to marry Christians? Hello? Amen. Amen. People of like precious faith. But, you know, some people ignore that and they just, because they want to have somebody. They want to feel love. They, the person may not even have a work ethic. They may not even have a job. Hello? But the person will marry them because, hey, they need someone. They may not even treat them like a, a prince or a princess that they are. But, you know, at least on Friday night, they're not alone. Can I, can I just say this this morning, that God wants every single one of us to have a positive family experience in our lives. So, well, Pastor, you don't get it, man. I grew up in a totally dysfunctional family. Okay, you understand the pain. You understand the hurt about it. How many of you believe that God can take you and you can be the one in your family line to break that bondage and to break that curse? Amen. And start a whole new line that right. says, listen, we're blessed because we know the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. That's give the right. Lord a big hand of praise today. Amen. And, and I want to encourage everybody in here who is single, and we've got lots of different singles here. Listen, listen, don't settle for second best. Don't settle for second best. You are a child of the living God, and you deserve someone who's going to treat you right. Come on. Amen. 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 And maybe you're just in a relationship right now, and it just seems like, man, it's just like it's crumbling. How many of you know God's bringing back hope? God's bringing back hope. He can change lives. And so what I'm saying is that God is the inventor of the family. Everybody needs a grandma. Everybody needs a grandpa. Everybody needs an auntie. We need cousins. Come on. And so here's what God also knew. <coughs> he knew that in the 21st century that families would be broken and 
messed up and hurt like they are in our world. And I want to tell you this. This is why he created the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that with all of my heart. And one of the great strengths, I believe, of our church, even though we're not strong in numbers, I want to tell you something. We do love each other like a family. Come on. We walk together like family. We can have that sweetness of fellowship like family. And so what I'm saying to you today, whether you, if you may feel all alone in the world, let me tell you something. You've got the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, it's not my blood family. No, it's your blood-bought family. Hello? Amen. And it's even more precious even sometimes than our blood sisters and our blood, blood brothers. Amen. And so what I'm saying is that God is the creator of family. So let's do something. Let's stop living alone. Let's stop isolating ourselves. Let's stop being by ourselves. Let's stop medicating ourselves on whatever. And let's walk together. Thank you, my brother. Let's walk together and believe the Lord together. Amen. Amen. Because God wants for us to experience the life and the hope and the joy of good families. Amen. I have a verse from Isaiah 58 and verse number 12. Powerful verse. Amen. It's a promise for anybody who's going through some stuff today. All right. It says this. It says, some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your city. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. Wow. I like that part. You know what this tells me? That not only God can restore homes, but God can use us to be instruments in the restoration and bringing people back together. Nothing is too hard for, for God. Nothing. Amen. Last Friday night in Celebrate Recovery, we watched the most beautiful testimony. I'm telling you, it was all about restoration of a mother and a daughter. And they've been separated in their lives. I mean, it was just amazing because the daughter had the same attributes as the mother had. And, and the mother had gotten straightened out. And then the daughter was going through the same things. And, and But how beautiful it was that when they came back together again. And God restored those homes. And God restored those families. I'm just here today to tell you that God is in that kind of business. And we can believe the Lord. So how many of you just give the Lord a hand of praise today, right now, believing that God's going to do that among us, God's going to do that in us, God's going to bring those here, amen, to be a part of this ministry that need that kind of encouragement.